What is up guys, pk 49 here, we are back on the desolation map. And I know I said something, but uh, guys, we're going to still work on the mall today. I know I said there was no more mall videos, but we get just one more, right? One more, let's do a mall video. Don't kill me. Ah, just kidding, no more mall videos, a promise is a promise. I told you guys that we would be done with the mall until episode 300, and I gotta keep that promise to you, because that's what I do, I keep promises, guys. Today we're working on something else, do you see this? Oh, baby! You know, a lot of people said, or not, even I thought this, that this parking lot in the mall was not big enough for all the mall patrons. You know, the people coming to buy all their stuff. They need places to park because they each, they all drive their own car, you know, there's no public transportation, they just drive here. So, I decided to make a parking garage. I got a lot of help from IGL Zenix and Stormzix. They helped me, we put this up in like a matter of an hour or two. Thank you guys for your help. Go check out their channels. They both have YouTube channels. They're both very talented and very creative, and I suggest you go check them out. I'm sure you're going to like one of them, at least, if not both. They're both pretty good, but they do have different styles, so who knows? Who knows? So go check them out. I'm going to put links to both of their stuff in the description. Yeah, yeah. So what I'm going to work on today is uh, I'm going to work on this stairwell. I'm going to actually, to be honest with you guys, I derp around a lot in this episode. I'm trying to build a stairwell. It's just not working out. I do. This is my second try at recording this, so you know we had a. I had a. I ran into a lot of problems. Okay, but what else is new? You know, problems are just ways for you to grow. So I grew as a Minecraft builder because of this. You know, I got a little bit stressed out, but in the end, it came together. So yeah. Today I also have Stale Raisin helping me out. He's doing some road work off camera right now, off in the distance. So thank you to Stale Raisin for helping me with that. Oh man, I'm so lucky to have helpers, guys. So lucky to have helpers. You guys are the best. The best. Around. No one's ever gonna bring you down. Have you guys seen Karate Kid? Uh oh, I just realized that a lot of you probably haven't seen Karate Kid. Oh my, oh my goodness. All right, anyway, today's Monday. We're doing a fast forward video and we're gonna get into the creative question of the week because that's what we do on Mondays. Oh baby, so let's dive right in. Today's question comes from Tracy Anderson, who I think is Aiden, right? That's Aiden. What was it like to see the earthquake of San Francisco or the Hudson Bay Plain Miracle and all the other natural disasters that you have witnessed and have and have you ever been in one? The Hudson Bay Plain Miracle? I don't think that was a natural disaster, but I get the gist of your question, Aiden. <laughs> Alright, thank you for asking. If you guys have a creative question, please put it in the comment section right now. I love these creative questions. I'm going to give you an answer you're not expecting most likely. So if you have any question whatsoever and you're looking for a different perspective, I'm your guy. <laughs> Alright? So he wants to know, uh, what was it like in the San Francisco earthquake, and I ever, have I ever witnessed any natural disasters? All right. Uh, first of all, yes, I was in the earthquake of 1989 in San Francisco. It was a 7.6, I think, on the Richter scale, which is pretty big. It's a pretty big earthquake. I was about 8 at the time. Well, let's see, 1989, I would have been 7 years old. Uh, actually, 6 years old, about to turn 7. It was during the World Series, and it was a crazy World Series because the A's, the Oakland A's, were playing the San Francisco Giants. So the World Series was being held in the Bay Area. I think it was during Game 4, and I think it was in San Francisco, and the earthquake hit. And it was crazy, guys. I was in a car with my mom and my sister, and my mom stopped the car immediately, and she said, What are you guys doing? Stop shaking the car. And I'm just like, I'm just sitting here. What are you talking about? And I look outside the windows and I can see the, the telephone poles just swaying like they were in the wind. You know what I mean? They were swaying like they were in the wind. It was pretty nuts. But it's sitting in the car, we didn't really feel too much. We were in Union City at the time, which was not very far from the epicenter. The entire Bay Area, which is where I live, we felt the thing. The epicenter was in Santa Cruz, I believe. And so we felt it all over the Northern California Bay Area. Like, everyone felt it. It was a really big earthquake. The Nimitz Freeway collapsed, and a lot of people were trapped and killed under there. The Bay Bridge collapsed, and a lot of cars, you know, fell into the... It was bad, guys. A lot of things were destroyed. Um, but all in all, it was uh, it was manageable. And to me, in my position, I mean, we, I got home and a, like one or two vases had fallen off. It wasn't a, a huge deal. To me, at the time, at seven years old, it was pretty fun, okay? As all earthquakes are. I've lived in California my, the majority of my life. And I've been through a lot of earthquakes. And every single one has been fun to me. It's something exciting, you know? They teach you that, you're, oh, the, you know, the earthquake's coming. you got to be scared and afraid. And you got to cower under your desk. No! An earthquake is a chance to, for you to have some fun, okay? It's cool. Like, here's the thing, guys. Aiden called it natural disasters. 
And that's just a matter of perspective. Because they're not disasters, they're natural. I mean, they're natural things. Let me, let me break down some knowledge for you guys. The Earth is a conscious being. The, you could almost call it like an animal, almost. You know, we, we always say the Earth is a rock hurling through space. It is not a rock. The Earth has a conscience, it has a soul, it is a living entity. We are living on a living being. Now, it's on a scale and size that our little human brains can't fathom. Just like a little ant. Like a little ant you see on the ground. You know, it can't fathom the consciousness of a human being. Okay? So, so we too cannot fathom the consciousness of a planet. But it, I guarantee you guys, I promise you, it, that the Earth is a living organism. Okay? And I'm not saying like a bunch of living organisms living on this rock make it a living organism. No. It is not a rock. It is a living being with a consciousness that is so far beyond our level of understanding that it's not even worth trying to think about. But just know that it is conscious. Okay? And these disasters that we speak of, they're not disasters. They're, they're natural occurrences that the Earth needs to continue moving on. Earthquakes are just a way of the conscious Earth, our mother, releasing stress basically you know when you really stress you go to the gun range or you play some sports or whatever when mother earth has to release some energy she has an earthquake or a volcanic eruption or something to that effect so you know we can look at them like disasters but they're not disasters they're they're our mother the earth is our mother just being her basically you know, and sometimes it causes destruction, but that's the price we pay for living on this being. You know what I mean? That's just the price we pay. For instance, forest fires. I want to—I did some research on forest fires. I want to tell you a little bit about forest fires, because when you see a forest fire, you think, "Oh, the death, the destruction is horrible." Guys, forest fires are natural and necessary for the forest to continue living. That's right. You know, it's not a bunch of death and destruction. It is the forest cleansing itself. When there's a forest fire, it clears the, the land, the ground of debris. Just debris. Just stuff that's, you know, kind of getting in the way of life from growing. You know, dead brush, dead stuff, okay? So that's one way it clears the, the forest floor of debris, making way for new vegetation. It opens up the, the, the ground to the sun so that the soil's nutrients can receive the sun's rays because a lot of forests you know the canopy stops the sunlight from getting down there and the forest floor is just filled with dead just debris dead debris so when a forest fire comes along and you know kind of makes some space for the sun the sun is able to our father the sun is able to you know seed the 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 growth you know give its energy so that the the soil can grow it nourishes the soil with the sun and um also, it kills a lot of the, the weaker trees, forest fire does. And these weaker trees, what they're doing essentially is stealing nutrients from these stronger trees, you know? So the forest fire actually kills trees that are sucking away the nutrients from trees that, you know, are really old and strong and powerful, sort of like survival of the fittest, you know? The weak are destroyed and the strong get stronger. So less competitions means strong trees can grow even stronger. What else? What else does it do? Uh, it removes brush and makes room for new food and new plants. So, you know, all that debris that is gone now can turn into new food so that new species and new animals can come to this forest and, and grow and, you know, increase the population. It also kills diseases. You know, a lot of trees have diseases. And a forest fire is a great way for, for Mother Earth to cleanse that forest of the things that's killing it. It's almost like, a, you know, cleaning. It's a cleanse is what it is. Also, some trees actually need fire to, to continue living. A lot of trees have forest or fire resistant bark and their acorns actually are, require fire for them to open. So a lot of trees will like grow three or four or five years and then without a fire they just die because their seeds never get spread because there's no fire to open up the acorn, right? So a lot of species of trees actually require fire in order to, to grow past, you know, their infancy. Does that make sense? So we look at these forest fires as horribly negative things, but they're actually just Mother Earth cleansing herself, okay? So as we live on this planet, we have to realize that we have a responsibility. Do you know what I mean? We were given this gift 
this home, this place to, to to grow and expand on. You know what I mean? Earth is a conscious being who has allowed us to exist on her. And to her, we're kind of like fleas. You know, fleas are fine. Fleas are on a dog are just fine. The dog doesn't care about fleas until those fleas start biting. Okay? Once those fleas start biting, then the fleas become a problem for the dog. And he starts scratching, trying to get the fleas off. And then you take the dog to the vet and you go even more extreme measures of getting rid of these fleas. Think of human beings on Mother Earth, on this living being. Think of us as fleas. She is just fine with us living on her as long as we don't start biting her. And what have we been doing for almost the entire duration of our existence? We've been biting Mother Earth. And especially in the last couple hundred years, we've been biting her really badly. Not just from pollution, not just from... Just from being the way we are, guys. We are so... We... We, re we take and we take and we take from Mother Earth and we rarely give her anything back. Do you know what I'm saying? We just take from her. We take her resources. We take her 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 essence, basically, and we, we mold them into cities. And these cities produce uh, waste. And this waste is not properly taken care of. We just release the waste back into the environment. And we have no care for what we're doing to this living being. But let me tell you guys, one of these days, this living being will fight back and we are all in trouble. Because just like your dog and the fleas on his back have no competition once the, the vet comes in, you know what I mean? There's no hope for the fleas once the vet comes in. Once Mother Earth, once Mother Earth Gaia is her name, decides that we, we need to be taken to the vet, <laughs> we are in big trouble because we will be eradicated. Right, we can push Mother Earth and push her and push her to to a point where she doesn't want to deal with it anymore. Does that make sense to you guys? So you know, it's a very. I'm not talking about global warming right now, okay? That is a whole different thing. That is a man-made invention, and whether it's true or not is debatable, okay? It's a theory. So I'm not talking about global warming. I'm talking about the way that we we live, the way our society is set up. We don't care about Mother Earth. Not at all. We don't teach kids how to grow sustainable foods. We don't, you know, teach people the impact that they have on a day-to-day -day basis by driving cars, by flying planes, by doing all the things they do, by not recycling. You know, we need sustainable lifestyles, and we don't have that. We have lifestyles that just take and take and take and take, and one day we're going to the vet. And when that day comes, guys, it's going to be pretty bad because you're going to see mass death. Mother Earth is going to... You know, bring the, the hurricane, she's gonna bring the tornado, she's gonna bring the fire, she's gonna bring the earthquakes, she's gonna bring the disease. That's right, diseases, they're not evil, they're not horrible things. Diseases is Mother Earth's way of controlling our raging population. We have seven billion of us who have no idea how to live sustainable lives. We're just all all seven to eight billion of us are just taking and taking and taking and giving nothing back to the earth. And so she invents uh, AIDS and Ebola and things that can kill us and cancers. You know, this is the product of Mother Earth trying to cleanse herself. We have acted as fleas on the back of a very patient dog. OK, she's been very patient with us, but I think our time may be running out, guys. How much can we bite this living being before she says enough is enough? Do you know what I'm saying? We we devour her children. We torture, slaughter, and devour her children on a mass basis every single day. I'm talking about the, the killing of animals for food. I want to talk a lot more about that in a future video, so I'm not going to get too much into it. But yes, we're, we're taking her children and make, turning them into food? Mother Earth is going to be very upset with us very soon. We need to change our ways. And a lot of you are saying, okay, there's 7 billion of us. What can I do? I'm just one person. What, what am I supposed to do about all of this? I can't change humanity. Absolutely wrong. You are absolutely wrong. Of course you can change. You can change yourself. That's one more person who is acting in the right way. And you may think that doesn't have an impact, but that has far larger impact than you could ever imagine because one other person sees you doing that. And they say, oh my goodness, that person is right. You know? And then someone sees that person. And they say, oh, wow. 
maybe that person's right. Before long, over time, that one original person has sparked change across the globe. That's how change starts from one single person. And that person could be you. That person, person has to be you. If you want to see this earth sustain our life for the rest of eternity. If we, have to, if we want to survive on this planet, we have to live in a symbiotic relationship with her. That means that we give and we take as much as she gives and she takes. I'm serious, guys. It's time to make a change. We're living in dark times. It's time to bring light to our society, to our way of life. Because Mother Earth is going to get upset. And we're going to see these so-called disasters happening more and more and more. Because she's had enough of us. Alright guys, that is the Creative Question of the Week video for today. I hope you guys learned something. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like. Please leave your comments. I want to start a discussion. Please leave more questions for next week because I love answering them. This parking structure is going to get done by the next time you see it. And of course, there you go. It doesn't work, 4J. It doesn't work. Do you see this? Do you see this? It doesn't work. So whenever... I don't know. 4J, you better fix something about this game. Alright guys, happy Minecrafting. Thanks for watching. Peace.